Halo Infinite hits top 10 on Twitch, a new team announced with HCS, and a whole bunch of leaks when it comes to narrative events, infection, new modes coming to the game, as well as a brand new game being created. We we'll talk about all that in this video. So if you want to know everything, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. The head of HCS, Tashi, recently tweeted out saying that the recent Orlando event actually had more viewership than Kansas City, which given the current state of Halo, and we've seen the population slightly decline over that since that time in May, that uh, it's actually kind of awesome to see that people are still tuning in the Halo to want to check it out. HCS is really carrying this franchise when it comes to just notoriety and people taking an interest into the whole thing. But as you see right here, actually the event peaked at around 100,000 concurrent viewers. So on Twitch, that puts you within the top 10 of the directory, which is awesome to see. It was actually more people watching Halo than watching people play the reason Modern Warfare 2 beta, which is really cool to see. Some other really crazy news, Quadrant, an EU team who did pretty well back in Kansas City, I think they finished about top 12 when it comes to the Orlando event, was recently announced as the, one of the new teams joining the partner program for HCS. Landon Norris, who is known for his F1 racing, as now an esports league. And this is actually their first team to put together to go into esports is in Halo, which is really cool. So great to see that we have new additions coming to the partner program. Ashi did state that these teams will have their own time to shine. So we will see some more teams coming down the line. Once we do know more teams, I'll definitely let you guys know on the channel. And a rather big update for the Master Chief Collection just came out, guys. Like this is actually significantly different versus the exchange menu in Halo MCC. Now offers more items per week. Most weekly and PVE challenges now reward two Spartan points instead of just one, which is awesome. And five new poses bundles are now available in the exchange. No download needed for the update. So if you're anyone like myself, who has been a little lacking on the MCC play and see all this cool stuff in an exchange, but don't have the currency to do it. Well, now most challenges, you're going to be earning double the Spartan points. So that's awesome. Okay, now let's get into the leaks and speculation. And we'll finish off with the one I think you guys all want to talk about. First, we have our familiar leaky boy, Sir Asia, recently tweeted this out, saying there will be some kind of changes coming with the narrative events. Saying the 343 narrative experience director, Dan Kosich, has stated this in his blog. This is the start of something and what comes next will have long ramifications on the storytelling within Halo universe. Though, when I hear that, I'm like, okay, well, right now at 343, right for me, I'm just kind of like, show me, don't, don't tell me at this point. The recent narrative event that we had was barely a narrative, if you want to call that, like the initial launch of the narrative event, like that, I think it was called Alpha Pack, was actually pretty well done. Give you a nice little context behind playing Last Spartan Standing. It was pretty good. That's about what I would expect. But then the second half was just like, there was nothing. There was just nothing. So we'll see what happens right here when it comes to the storytelling for season three and maybe even a little bit when it comes to the winter contingency. If you like these news and informational videos, guys, make sure you tap that like button as it is the best way to help support the content on this channel. One of the other credible leakers within the community, Bathrobe Spartan, recently tweeted, and that's how it's all in French because, well, he's French. Uh, but basically it says right here that the infection mode is indeed functional within Halo Infinite and they just played it. So apparently the survivors, aka humans, have bulldog, shotguns, psychics, and grapple which is interesting, then the infected only had the energy sword. So it'd be kind of interesting to see how this whole thing plays out. Uh, because if you're infected, it looks like your movement is just about the same, but then you actually have advanced movements for the humans and not for the uh, zombies. That just seems a bit counterintuitive. Usually the like, zombies are have extra mobility, but are way faster and can move faster than you. But then like, if you've mixed it up with Halo Infinite where the humans actually kind of have a more mobility, it just might not quite hit as you expect when it comes to infection within Halo Infinite. Again, this is a developing story. Once we uh, know more about it, I'll share with you guys here on the channel. It looks like another leak from Bathrobe Spartan might give us a glimpse into the winter contingency event that's coming around, as well as Super Fiesta, saying that the Glow Ball Slayer, which is Chuck Plasma Hot Snowballs, at your enemies with to win. And they also mentions about Super Fiesta, which is gonna be a huge benefit when it comes to regular Fiesta, because regular Fiesta, Fiesta I just find kind of boring. This looks like an image right here of Super Fiesta. And from uh, what I've heard, Horace would be about right. And also with Global Slayer, I mean, it's kind of 
reminds me of like that one Halo 5 event, right? Where you had like the winter houses and stuff like that and you would throw plasmas at people and stick each other. So it sounds like they're trying to replicate that mode into Halo Infinite. Now, I'm sure many of you have seen the leaks that were recently reported by Sean W and some other people around Twitter saying that there sounds like 343 is trying to ditch Halo Infinite for Halo The Endless being a brand new game. Bonnie Ross actually isn't fired and will be the new head of Activision. Or maybe all the leaks are true because it would be really weird to see how slow the turnaround is when it comes to content, when it comes to Halo Infinite, unless the team is looking to go somewhere else. Now, Jess Korn did tweet that out, but then he actually deleted it and then came back and said that he actually deleted the tweet about Halo stuff because everyone is piling on the reporter, which is not fair. I'll hopefully have some details about what's going on with Tatanka plus Halo Infinite for Xbox Two podcast this week, which is his weekly podcast that he usually does right here. Then if Tatanka truly has changed to Unreal, which a lot of their job postings did say that if you have familiarity with Unreal 4, it's actually a bonus for every single job posting that they had. And that it would be utterly insane given how long it has been in development would move far beyond the original scope, which has to integrate your progression from Halo Infinite. Don't see how they could do that on separate engines, but maybe they can, I don't know. The interesting thing, he did tweet this out, saying that the more I look into this, the more I think Sean W could be right, which is actually might line up with what Sarasia tweeted out saying Tatan delayed with the number 24 after saying that 2024 release is what's looking like what might be for this Battle Royale mode coming to Halo Infinite. Of course, these are all speculation, rumors, and stuff like that, but it sounds like some of it might be legit, some of it might be a little iffy, but we'll have to wait and see. But we'll keep you guys up to date as soon as we hear some more information about it. If you want to hear the updates when it comes to cross core customization coming in before Season 3, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.